Good afternoon. My name's Jonathan Norman. I'm Knowledge Manager at the Major Projects Association, and I'm delighted to be talking to Matt Marsh about the subject of unlocking stuck business change. So Matt, before we get into the into the depths of that subject, do, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, so um, I'm an independent consultant, um, sometimes coach as well. It takes a bit of that. Um, I have a book, about, I'm an author, and I am an occasional uh, lecturer in business schools and, and design schools. And, um, you know, my thing, my, my interest really is around our businesses that are struggling to engage with the new world and uh, can't figure out why it is that they can't find their next cycle of prosperity. And that's, that's the thing that I'm really, really interested in. Yeah, fantastic. Good. I'm sure we'll come, I'm sure we Sure, we'll come back to the subject of design before the conversation is is over. But let's get let's get stuck in. Um, this idea of of stuck business change um, it kind of suggests that, that organisations know that they need to change, but either they they find it impossible to get off the starting blocks, or they kind of think, yeah, we need to change, right? Change, and then they launch themselves and very quickly get stuck. Um, what is it about organizations that, that that they struggle so much with change and even if they understand the imperative they they find it very difficult to do and it, it, it's a peculiar thing because when you go into these businesses um normally there are people in there that know something isn't quite quite right so as individuals, you know, there's a, a sense of concern, but the business as a whole is sort of slightly unable to react to, to that. Um, and there is a little bit of um, can't see the wood for the trees, but it, you know, I found, and I'm not sure whether your experience is the same, but I find that businesses tend to want to change or innovate because something's happening, something's forcing them to do it. Um, they, they need to survive. Um, and quite often that's some sense of declines happening, either their market share is going down, their share price is going down, they're hemorrhaging customers, they're seeing new, you know, new uh, folk competitor, competitors come along. And there's this sort of sense of, especially for businesses that have been around quite a long time, I'm not talking about start, you know, startup culture, but if a business has been around 20, 30, 40 years and had a lot of success, when they're suddenly faced with that reality, they, there's, they've almost got sort of this fear, this decline on the mind, fear. Um, and quite often that fear can lead to, you know, almost a sense of denial at, at, at the group culture level. Um, and so it there almost becomes a, you know, a thing that happens where, you know, just, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Um, and it, th that can be really the, the first stage is internalizing it and not wanting to reach out because they're thinking backwards to the great times when everything, you know, when the curve was, you know, you know, go, going really, really well. So it, it, it's an odd, it, it, it's an odd thing that goes on. Um, and I think in terms of where the blockages, you know, that cause that, I, I think in some ways, you know, part is partly to do with the language, change, transformation, innovation. These are words, you know, buzzwords that are thrown around. But but what do they really actually mean? They're yeah. quite nebulous, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, it means you know something not as it was. <laughs> you yes. Know? Yes. And and I think when when that's left ambiguous, that can turn out to cause quite a lot of problems further along the way. And then with that ambiguity, you've got to overlay that on what that the human element that that implies. So yes. something you're telling people that, you know, there's going to be some change or transformation or, and the natural reaction is, well, what, what does that mean for me? You know, yes. you know, I get a loss of influence, a loss of senior seniority 
a loss of ability to impact or, you know, or, um, you know, or am I going to lose my team? Yes. Am I actually going to lose my job? Yes. Yes. So there's a lot of nuanced human stuff that goes on in that moment of um, when, when decline, decline, you know, is on the mind. Um, and then the other thing in terms of kind of blockages is, is that these, you know, the, 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 the media would like to suggest that these things happen kind of quite instantly and everything's back to normal and it's happy days. Mm. But actually these things move at quite a glacial pace. I and mean, if you just think about the amount of time it takes to get the funding in place, mm. then you, you have to hire some people. Then there's got to yeah. be some... You know, so there's quite a lot of lead time that happens yes. and the truth of it is is that when you have this sort of ambiguous language and people are worried about how things are going to play out you know you know for them and it going slowly people begin to lose interest and this is one of the difficulties of when you don't manage that 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 process well with clear objectives that yes. are you know that, that are measurable or yes. seeable in some way yes. Yes. Um, and then and then suddenly change just turns into this sort of blob of activity that you can't see. You can't remember what the beginning was and you certainly can't see what the end is. Yes. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of kind of, you know, kind of very interesting issues that uh, that are very hard for you within the organization to actually put your finger on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can I can hear there's a lot of emotion at the organizational level and also at the personal level. Yeah, um, I, I, I think so, yeah. You, you, you talked about, you know, it takes time to, to get the team together to, to plan what you're gonna do, um, which takes us into the world of, of projects. And, um, and I wondered whether, whether you feel that, that um, projects, which is the medium by which organizations often get things done, are, are they a good medium for, for, for business change? Well, yes. But for me, um, when we start talking about projects, it sort of implies to me much more of the delivery side of things, yeah. which is fine. Mm -hmm. But if um, there are some things that are missing before the projects get going, i.e. the direction that you want to take and the destination is unclear, you can easily jump into this situation of leaping before looking yes. and you start busy doing busy work, thing, things start happening. And you see that this happens all the time in, 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 in stark businesses. It's not that attempts have, you know, haven't been made. Usually a bunch of attempts have been made, but nothing's really happening. Nothing's really changing. And then that even heightens the emotional yeah. elements as well because people are politically and personally vested in those things yes. so i think for me one of the things that is you know is often missing is the bit that happens before they turn into projects right and you know it's a bit like if you're you know if, if you head off you know to south from southampton and you want to get to new york you know and and, and you're a bit off course you'll end up in rio de janeiro or circling the Isle of Wight, right? Yes. And yes. so the, for me, um, the way you set off before you get to the projects is absolutely critical. And perversely is often the bit that is ignored. Yes. And once you've done that setting off, it's quite hard to go back and go, oh, wait a minute. Yes, yes. So um, it's about catching things, early, you know, catching the issues early, um, I think is absolutely critical um, for organizations to really uh, be successful at any one of those three, whether it's innovation change or transformation. Yeah, <clears throat> well, let's, let's, let's pick up on that because <clears throat> you talked about the, the, the importance of, of getting the direction in place and, and a sense of the vision and everything before you kind of start. But, how how do you begin that process if if you aren't sure what the outcome is if you don't know you know exactly where you need to get to if you don't know exactly what the organization needs to look like at the um at the end of the process mm. how, how do you how do you how do you even begin well i i, I honestly believe the first thing 
one needs to do is drill down on what do these terms mean and step away from some of the language. So a lot of people talk about trans transformation and we, and, you know, we kind of know, you know, what tr you know, trans, you know, we see, we see uh, werewolves, you know, human werewolf transformation, you know, yes. kids movies, the transformers, you know, is it like that? Uh, yes. You know, our friend Eddie Obeng talks about caterpillars turning into butterflies. Yes. And I think for me, one of the realities is asking, is this really about transformation or is it about a transition? Right. It's a bit, you know, it's like, oh, that, you know, that's, that's not so sexy. But if you kind of think about a lot of organizations, the truth is, is that they're transitioning, you know, from one set of technologies to another, one set of customer journeys to a set, another set of customer journeys. Right. And, um, if you if you're really interested in the transform part of it i think that, you know you know the firms that have best done that is setting up a separate sort of group like the skunk works or the turbo yes. teams at png or um the advanced technology group as once was at apple you know where they're, they're they've got different conditions and permissions where they're, they're out to go and, and instead of pushing the organization from from behind they're more like little tugs a set of tugs that pull it in in, in the right in the right direction yes and those are those sorts of experiments let's call them that or stepping into completely new futures um allows them to experiment a yes. little bit more yes but to go I think to kind of really answer your question, question directly when you don't know what the outcome is, apart from drilling down into what does it really mean, I think you really, um, you need to do that diagnosis work, first of all. Mm. And, you know, the way that I go about that is working with the leadership team initially to get a first sort of scan of really what's going on, what's been tried, what hasn't been tried. Bear in mind that usually in these organi any these organizations, it's not a lack of ideas. There's usually too many ideas and there's a tug of war going mm. on about, mm. about them. And that's, you know, that needs mediating mm. and, and unpacking. And that usually means bringing in some external perspective that's not, you know, just within the business so they can begin to see differently and seek out new perspectives and hear new things mm. and then i think once you've got that first scan you can then drill down into the coal face of what's actually happening and really understand what the motivations blockers opportunities are that are going on and then craft some kind of intervention that allows those to be brought to life make it real before it's real classic mm. innovation process yes um and then i'll you know arbitrate that you know simple techniques where you encourage lots of different points of view using you know good old de bonos uh critiquing or, or, yes you yeah. know a bit of dot voting so that yes. people feel included in, in it and and of course it's at that point where you know you need you know you need to express that there are loads and loads of good of ideas here but maybe these ones aren't the first ones, maybe they're the second or the third ones, or maybe these ones don't feel right for this brand or the investment money, or um, and then and then you get into that conversation. With, well, actually, no, we don't really want to transform and completely cannibalize our existing business. What we'd actually like to do is improve it or make it better for our colleagues or our customers or our suppliers or stakeholders or something else. Actually, now we've got a shared conceptual model about actually what's going on. Yes, yes, that's, that, I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, to me, this idea of getting a sense of what's going on is, is fundamental, because I, I can see one of the, the problems of asking them to say, what would you like the future to look like, is that they're going to be very conditioned by the fact that they're a caterpillar. So they, they, they're always going to talk about, we want lots of leaves, or, you know, yeah. they, they just cannot conceive of, of, of this future because they're, 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 they're so grounded in in their current state so once you understand what's going on then you can start to kind of um, build from that um of course you talk it was interesting and really interesting to hear you talk about transition because um you know there is increasingly this sense that that 
that change is a continual process and that actually we're now in the mm. kind of post-digital era we're in, in in a space that organizations have never been in before which is one where actually you have to keep rolling over um, and and you can't have a five-year or a ten-year strategy and then you stop and do some real work until you need to change again actually change needs to be um, baked into um, the organization's activities how 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 do you um, how do you move from this kind of linear approach of we need to go from a to b to actually we need to be nomadic if you like the idea of continue doing it continuously mm. does have some issues with it yes people get tired yes and, and it gets lost in a fog of of activity yes and um so I, 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 you know, I, I, I know we, we would talk about, you know, it's a new world and mm. of continuous change, but hasn't business always been that way? I mean, you know, whether it was the oil crisis in the seventies, whether it was new technology coming in in the eighties, whether it, you know the rise of globalized, you know, mm. there's always been, you know, so there's there's an, always an important uh, part to this, which is understanding context. Sure. And what's actually going on and some kind of views and coming up with various options yeah. about ways that you, you can manoeuvre. Yes. Okay? And I think that, that goes back to, to sort of, you know, what I would consider in it is almost inherent to being a, a, a sustainable Yes. Business that wants yeah. to be around in another 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. And um, I, I, I am a great believer in um, A, including a range of people from up and down the hierarchy of the organization in that and you yeah. know, creating scouts who look, look for those, those things. And so that you've got honest input coming back. I'm also a great believer in looking to adjacent and analogous businesses and practices to yes. help inform and give you a grounded real pers real perspective yeah that kind of truth serum yeah thing yeah you know, that yeah. comes in but you've got to want you got, you know you've got to want that truth serum uh, you know to kind of move beyond the uh decline and denial spiral yes um and i also think it's really important to um recognize that there are other beats in a business's existence yes where it's not about continuous change they have to react yes. so i call that the I, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with bombay beach in the united states which was a, a resort right um and um unbeknownst to them you know they built this massive resort and, and unbeknownst to them due to climate change and a few other things the lake be began to, to dry out as an inland lake Right. And it's now uh, just, the, you know, this decrepit, you know, so sometimes there are external externalities. Yes. That suddenly come along and we've just lived through some of, yes. the, some, yes. some of those um, that come along and knock you for six. Yes. Right. There's also another one, which is what I what which I call the jumping the shark moment and which comes right. from the TV series Happy Days. Yes. And yes. You know, the, 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 the story is, is that uh, they had um, the fawns leaping over, you know, a shark. And it was at that point that, you know, they, the people making the, the series yeah. knew they had just completely <laughs> lost. <laughs> Time to stop. Yes. <laughs> you know, got to stop, reset, move forward and so forth. Yes. Um, and so, so the reason why I mention those is, is to normalise it. Yeah. This is normal, but you know. So when we get into the in, into into this, you know, conversation, because the pervasive narrative is one at the moment certainly is one of unicorns. Everyone's going to be rich, multi-millionaires, blah blah blah. It's really difficult for businesses to kind of fess up that things aren't going as well as they want want it to. Easier when you're a yes. startup and you see a lot of TV shows, you yeah, know, yeah. Dragons Den, you know, Money Maker, you know, all all yes. of these. You know, yes. You know, but for great heritage and legacy businesses, it all it it almost feels like the dirty laundry mm. of the business of having to admit 
yes. that you're having a Bombay Beach moment or a, you know, a jumping the shark moment. And yes. that, th you know, something needs to be done. And who do you turn to? Yes. Now, in the old days, you, you, you really had very few options and you had to have an enormous bank balance to be able to buy them. And you had to accept that you might be taking a bit of a punt with that yes. bank yes. balance. Yes. Because there weren't really people around like me yes. who had a real interest in this concept of, of being stuck and what it actually feels like yes. and being able to give them the way out, to help them uncover the problems. And, you know, and even to the point of discovering the things that they really didn't even know were issues until someone external with a different lens, yeah. and a different style of leadership could come in, you know, and then giving them the way out which hopefully is about upskilling themselves or changing some things about themselves rather yes. than all having to be outsourced. Yes. So that, that's why I'm so interested in this is because there are so many of these great businesses that are really, really important to their communities. You know, they're not the ones you read about every single day in the paper and everything yeah, else. Yeah. But, yes. you know, um, you know, they're important, you know, not just because they're successful and they deserve to have another round of success. They're, you know, they're important because they're quite often the main employer in communities. Yes. They, you know, yes. you know, the kids all go to the same schools. Yes. You know, there's a lot of personal uh, and social capital tied up in these organisations. But I do feel that they've been rather neglected yes. in the past. Yes. And, you know, I, you know, I feel like I'm kind of on, on my mission to yes. readdress that balance and, and, you know, provide a new kind of place to go that is empathetic with their with, with their situation to be perfectly honest yes yeah yeah that's a really that's a really interesting point and and and, and a great place to end really is, is is kind of thinking about the purpose of the business and 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 the value of the business um it, it isn't it isn't just or ideally it isn't just a money-making machine that you're just saying okay as perhaps we're encouraged to on the television to say oh yeah and it, it's dragon's den you just grow by 200% and it, it's actually something that is connected to the, the, the stakeholders as well as the shareholders and, and connected perhaps to a local community and it's important to, to understand that in the, in, the, in the change process. Well yeah because it, you know for me you know just letting these great organizations disappear to me it just seems like such a waste Yes. Like why, why, why wouldn't we want to regenerate, mm. yes. help them recover, yes, yes, help them reinvent, yeah, indeed, and find a new a new place? Why, why wouldn't we want to do that? So it's, it goes slightly counter to that sort of destructive capitalism, you kind yes. of, you know, which, which is it, it's all just inevitable. You, you know, you've had your time, you've got to go. You know, it seems. I don't know. I find that hard to just buy into, you know, as yeah. a flip yes. sort of approach to things. I really it, do. It feels it feels like a very wasteful approach to, to, to things, doesn't it? Yeah. Which I mean, is... that's probably because you know, or, you know, you know, child of my time. You know, growing up in the yeah. '80s, where we saw just vast sections of uh, industry and manufacturing thrown literally on a, on a yes. scrap. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I find, found that you know. Yeah, just wasteful and yes. uh, and unnecessary, really. Yes. Uh, yeah. When there's so many good skilled people inside these organisations, as I say, you know, it's not a lack of ideas or a lack of skills. It's just they find themselves in this situation, and who do you turn to? It's yeah. just really absolutely fascinating to me.